Hello everybody, Peter of England. Right, as many of you will be aware, on the 29th of May this year, the economic impact payment vouchers from Weirbank were made available. They were made available initially to people predominantly in the United Kingdom and in the United States. However, the good news is they will soon be made available to people in um, Canada, Australia and Germany. The reason for the initial um, restriction was the sheer volume of applicants that we were expecting to get and in fact we did get. So that's the good news. Um, the rationale behind these economic impact payment vouchers, which are tied in with what's called the CARES Act in the United States and the Coronavirus Act 2020, particularly Section 86 for those people in the United Kingdom, are a means of what's called a financial relief for people who have been inconvenienced by the lockdown, by being furloughed from work and being impacted by all the restrictions that the government have placed upon you via statutory instruments, not law. So, though the Coronavirus Acts in various countries have been possibly passed with a full reading in the various House of Commons and Assemblies, all the additional uh, baggage about you can wear a mask, when you can go out, when you can not go out, what confinement is, what the R number is, and all that baloney, is nothing more than statutory instruments which are just like corporate bylaws. Yeah? Now, the economic impact payment vouchers were offered to the Trump administration and to the uh, administration that was in the United Kingdom, uh, the government bodies, um, in March of 2019. So we were presci pre prescient on these matters. We were, uh, we were visionary in this because we foresaw the fact that the way that the debt mountain was climbing, the way that the economies were suffering and were being pumped by the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England and other central banks meant that this pumping, as example in the Federal Reserve case into Wall Street, of $1 billion a day being pumped into the markets to falsely and artificially prop up the stock market figures and to make uh, companies like Tesla, Chrysler, um, United Airlines or American Airlines look good on paper was there really just to put money into the pockets of the fat cats, the magnets of business and the mandarins of industry at the expense of the people. So the quantitative easing was delivered to them with the theory that it would trickle down to your pocket, but in fact it just went into pension funds, it went into uh, corporate options for um, CEOs and members of the board and such like. So you never benefited at all. So what we are proposing here, and we were doing it a year ago now, is that there should be a quantitative easing for you. You, the people. You, the people that create all the wealth. You, the people that create the GDP that everybody talks about. You are the economic machine that needs rewarding. So, for what has been perpetrated upon the populations due to the lockdown, people not being allowed to conduct their businesses as they should be allowed, and for all sorts of financial inconvenience, now the big question is, as the videos previously have said, who pays for the lockdown? Who pays for the inconvenience? Who pays for what you had to forego? Now what we do find is that there are many banks and financial institutions now that though they gave a three month or four month or longer payment holiday are now coming back even more vigorously and demanding that payments resume, one thing, but that you catch up on the payments that were missed. So where is this extra money coming from? The world economy resembles at the moment a large cedar tree in the forest, um, a redwood in the forests of California that has been chopped at the base. It doesn't seem to be falling, but it's falling. And it would not be a surprise to me if now that the um, aristocracy, if the crown, if the House of Windsor that has been disbanded in the United Kingdom and they've all fled as I predicted over nearly two years ago on the channel, uh, they've all fled, and so what we have now is an economy that is actually set to crash. So, what you need to do is to attend a webinar. There is a webinar scheduled for the 30th of July. 30th of July is a Thursday. 
It's at 6 p.m. There'll be more information on it down below, so please read the descriptor box. And this is going to explain the following that many of you have already received, but we hope many more will. So this is in effect the, the package that you get when you've ordered your vouchers. It comes to you like so. Within, there are the vouchers themselves. So depending upon the number that you've required or uh, requested, anywhere between one and five. There's a restriction on five at the moment as a matter. So these are to pay for debts and problems that you have incurred because of restrictions in your livelihood, your workplace, or um, basically your way, of, your way of living generally. Within there, there are two sets of instructions. There are a set of instructions to you, showing you what you need to do. And there are a set then of instructions for the payee, very explicitly showing and telling him, her, it, the corporation, what it needs to do. So it's very clear, it's very precise. So the webinar is going to cover um, how to handle any pushback that you might be getting from the payee, and also to explain the intricacies and the, the Fabergé bejeweled item that this economic impact payment voucher really is. Okay? Because it is the first instrument, it is the first financial his, uh, instrument, probably in history, that has been issued to you, which bypasses the entire financial commercial structure and architecture of central banking. And why it does that is because one or two banks have threatened, and in fact sometimes returned the voucher, saying that they can't accept it or handle it because it's what's called a non-clearing item. Which means they can't pass it through the ABA, American Banking Associations Network, or the British Banking Associations Network, or they can't take it through the normal clearing system. And why not? Because it's treasury. It's public side. It's not private Bank of England side. Okay? So this is the main difference. That this voucher is only for the treasuries. The treasuries print the money and coin, and the bank, like the Bank of England or the Federal Reserve, is only allowed to print another form of money, paper money, or promissory notes, that should only be used within the city square mile or the 10 square mile duplication in grandeur of uh, Washington, D.C. So this is the trick. So money is being weaponized. We're Bank has never been as important, as I said, now than before. It's the most important uh, first stop you should be looking at now for any financial predicament that you're suffering from. So there will be some pushback on the vouchers because people are predominantly ignorant of what they've got in their hand. We are going to show you what it actually is and what it means. Not only is it treasury based, therefore nothing to do with compliance with the FCA, nothing to do with any regulatory authority or any other organisation out there that per per perpetrates uh, the, the, the financial slavery of the high street loan. Lots of these banks are coming to people and saying uh, it doesn't meet the terms and conditions of your mortgage agreement. Um, it is an, an unacceptable form of payment. But who are they to say what form of payment? Was the lockdown part of the terms and conditions in the mortgage agreement? Was months without being able to leave your home in safety and security part of the mortgage terms and conditions? Or that for your credit card? Or to make payments on your car? No. So all these people are fossilised in their mentality and they're living in a version of the economics of the world that have gone and will never return. The tree is just about to go. So, don't pay any attention to what they say. You want to clarify at every point, they must present the voucher for clearing or for acceptance at the Treasury. Because if they want to escalate it and take it to court, the judge, magistrate or district judge will have two very simple questions. The first one to the payee will be, have you actually presented this to the Treasury for drawdown? No. The second question will be, why not? So, 
What we're showing you in the webinar is the intricacies of the voucher, how it is a proof and help to you in showing that there is a trust out there, that you are the beneficiary of that trust, and not only does it give you the ability under what's called the Sesame Key V Act 1666, Section 4, on how to access that via chancery, yeah, to reclaim your estate, but also how to then unburden yourself from this projection that the courts have placed onto you, that you are a minor, a lunatic, um, a cretin, an imbecile, a ward of court, something that has to be looked after by a guardian. For those of you in the United States, I think it's 31 CFR 363.6. And for those in the United Kingdom, under English common law, you need to look at the guardianships of minors in relation to court and chancery. Because that's what they have you down as, as a minor. A child being looked after by the guardian. And the guardians are the government. So this is what the voucher bypasses and gives you the keys, in effect, to the financial kingdom. So, there could be also out there a systemic financial services push now to deliberately inconvenience people by refusing to allow them to delay their, their rental payments and their mortgage payments with a, a means of up, up, uploading more um, evictions, more foreclosures or repossessions uh, into the marketplace as, a, as an end to this financial dependence that some of you have with the idea of introducing universal uh, basic income, putting you all at home, looking at uh, working via Zoom or Skype or some other medium, receiving a universal payment and uh, scratching your head waiting for the next set of instructions. So if you value freedom, if you value your your future and your children's future, what seems to be left of it, then come along to the webinar on the 30th, Thursday, 6pm. There's a notional charge because we have a limited number of seats and the bandwidth has to be paid for. So look forward to seeing you then. Touch, like, subscribe, do all that other stuff. Peter of England saying thank you.